So hello good people of the internet, this is Tommy Kelly and this is the Tommy Kelly Podcast. And in this episode what I'm going to try to do is try to kind of work my way around the idea that possibly um, chaos magic may have some inherent dangers in it if you bring it to its natural conclusions. And therefore the reasons being why I would not try to convince someone of uh, or try to change the mind about uh, you know trying to approach life from a chaos magic perspective so let's get into that so over the last while i've been watching an awful lot of jordan peterson lectures and stuff like that and you know he's he's become quite quite well known and uh, famous and infamous and people you know take them don't take them and all that but it was kind of what what was getting to me was not getting to me what I found interesting was that I don't have that kind of drive in me that he has where he would like people to see his side of the story to see his views and to change their minds about how they view their life whatever like he finds he's very passionate about it and feels that he's doing good work obviously and that he's he's trying to make the world a better place and a couple of reasons why i don't think i would ever put myself in a situation like that as well one i do not have his brain or his um ret- rhetoric or his debating skills in any sort of way and um, i'm much too hot-headed <laughs> when it comes to that i could not uh keep calm and collected in the way he does or any of these people i also the second one is i don't care enough about other people's views on things and I don't really care if people believe me or not or not believe me agree with me or not on on how I view things I remember for years there was kind of an issue with me that I couldn't have a thought if I read a book it wasn't and then I would talk to someone else about it and they disagreed with it or they didn't like the view it kind of ruined that idea for me and I noticed myself doing that. And as soon as I noticed that, I tried to stop it because it was like oh, almost as if I can't have, I can't agree with an idea or I can't have an idea in my head or I can't have work with an idea unless other people validate it. And it was different people in, in particular that I, I, I would talk to these about. And if they didn't validate these, I agree with the ideas, I kind of I dropped it, which I think is a bit sad in a way because means I wasn't making up my own ideas about it or making up my own decisions about these thoughts but I gradually got out of that and to the point where what happened on my kind of spiritual or magical journey or whatever word I could try to use there that didn't make me cringe um, is that I went originally searching for capital T truth in the world or in the universe or what's going on you know the actual truth the thing that doesn't change from the beginning of time to the end of time from today to tomorrow thing that no matter what i think about it or don't think about it whether i know or not, don't know what's written about it what's not written about it whether a human is there or not the actual capital the truth in of what's going on and that's what i was always searching for spiritually magically or other cringeworthy words and what i found then is that if I came across an idea and someone else didn't, particular people didn't validate it um, or agree with it, that I was kind of had decided, well, that can't be the truth. Because I kind of assumed that if there was a truth, then as soon as we heard it, we would all agree, which is a bit naive, of course. So once I got into magic more than spirituality or general philosophy or religion, theology, whatever it was, whatever these things like... I kind of what really attracted me to chaos magic is this whole idea of subjective truth and acting as if not believing something to be true or trying to convince yourself to, well no it is about convincing yourself not capital T truth important that small t truth is important is more important and this whole idea of that the difference between say a scientific approach and a magic approach According to Ramsey Jukes in his book, S-S-O-T-B-M-E, hope we got that right, which we're doing in the um, book club at the minute, is that science, for the most part, is about falsification, about proving something wrong. And when you can't prove something wrong, then, you know, you prove it. That proves it's right. Not exactly that, but it, it's like 
the scientific method or a scientific theory can only be a, considered a scientific theory if you can actually prove that it's, you know, if you can falsify it in the sense of it's not a scientific theory to believe or to say, I, there is a blue dot that hovers above my head that no one can hear or see, but has given me deep insights or give me extra powers or something like that. That's totally unfalsifiable. There's no way of disproving that. There's no way of disproving there is a, a God. There's no way of disproving a lot, you know, these kind of things, where, like the, the spaghetti monster. There's no way of disproving it. So therefore, it's not a scientific theory. It's kind of, in a sense, it's philosophy. Or, you know, it's like something, it's outside of the, the bounds of science. Like, a lot of anecdotal stuff comes in that because you, you can't like if someone goes I've I've talked to an angel well you go well I can't disprove that to a large you know to a large what I call you a liar and I get you know those kind of things so it's just not scientific it's not considered scientific so science while well, science is all about falsification proving something's wrong Ramsey Jukes would suggest and I tend to agree with him I have to say that the magic approach particularly the chaos magic approach is all about verification of these ideas where you go out of your way to convince yourself that this is true and then act as if it is true and in the kind of process of acting as if you further verify these things and the caveat with that is you only do it as if it's getting you the desired result if that's you know that the thing that you want uh, and by believing what you do and acting as if certain beliefs or the world is the way you've decided it is, you get the thing you want, then that's good. That's what you're aiming for. And you try to gather as much evidence for that as possible in order to more fully convince yourself of the truth of it. Small t. So science would definitely say that it's concerning itself with capital T truth. And magician is probably very this is all generalities and you know you could be sitting there going well i'm a magician and i'm totally interested in capital t truth and this is the thing what happens what seems to be happening in certain areas of chaos magic is that it's going from the subjective truth to acting as if the um you know personal truth or whatever to a kind of thing where it's looking for the capital t truth of magic which is fine, absolutely. You know, people obviously are allowed to do whatever they want. I can't stop them. But it's it becomes, to me, less interesting and yet less useful because it's then you're close to dogma, which isn't really in chaos magic. You know, it's kind of, that's what chaos magic tried to remove from magic and from occultism and stuff like that is this dogma element of of demanding that your truth or your personal gnosis is a universal truth. And Ramsey Jukes talks about this in the book where he goes like, if you find something, an idea that works for you and it's getting you the results you want, do not demand then that it's true universally or to other people or whatever, because it's defeating the purpose of what the chaos magic thing is about, which is finding your own, your own outlook or filter to get your desired results. And this whole thing of, uh, unverified personal gnosis where you have an insight or you have a view of the world or whatever that changed everything for you and therefore you have to demand for it to be true capital t truth that other people believe it too and i think to a large extent that's what i was trying to do when i would come across an idea or i would read a book and then i would say it to other people i was trying to make that small t truth into capital t truth by getting the verification of other people and i think that's what people try to do when they force their gnosis their unverified personal gnosis onto other people and they can do it in a very nasty heavy-handed way and i see it you see it an awful lot in chaos magic and it's i find it i find it odd that people don't see the irony of that where they'll talk about chaos magic and belief shifting and paradigm shifting and you know belief, uh, belief is a tool and nothing is true everything is permitted and in the next sentence then demands that their truth is true or their outlook is true, or what they think is true. And I find that odd, and I understand it, and I understand where it's coming from because it's something I have uh, also wrestled with and stuff like that. But with this whole acting as if it is, and, you know, the verification of your own thing, it's that thing that Anton LaVey has spoke about. And I, I, it's the eighth rule, or satanic rule of the, of the earth. I think it's the eighth. 
where he goes, if you have got something by using magic, then acknowledge the magic or everything that you have got will be taken away and more. My reading of that, and this is from my reading, this is like if you're a big Lviv uh, aficionado and you disagree with me, you're, you're probably right, right? So don't, you know, you, this is my small tea trade about Ant Lviv, but this, what, I, what I get from that is that if you have done, say as a chaos magician, I do a sigil and it's I decide that I want it for, I don't know, to get a new phone, whatever. And then I get the new phone. But I get it in such a way that it goes, well, that didn't really seem like magic. What I've talked about this before, where the world will very quickly normalize things. and it will be, Because if, if magic is a thing, then it has to do it in an unobvious way or else we'll all be at it, you know. So it has to do it in kind of like true sinks or true ways that would seem normal enough because you, if you, if a phone just fell out of, out of the heavens and landed in your hand, that's too much and that would change you know, your, your life too radically or whatever. So it'll do it in a way that it will fit in more or less with your, your beliefs about what the world is and how the universe works and all that, I think. So the danger then is to go, oh, well, I, I, I did sigil for this, but, you know, someone just give me their, their, their phone or whatever. It just, it was, it was luck. It was something else. It wasn't. And the thing that Aunt LeVay is warning about there is that that then the magic goes away from it. Whereas if you demand, yes, I did this sigil for a new phone and I got it. Magic. And you acknowledge it and you accept it and you push forward with it. You are now living in a universe or in a world in a life where magic exists. And you've reinforced it by demanding that the uh, the result you got was by magic. And you've acted as if magic is real, that your sigil worked and that kind of thing. So then the next time you go to approach these things, you have a better bedrock to work from. And that's, yes, I do live in a magical universe. I'm looking and you, you've, you know, you've looked for more verification rather than falsification of it. And so therefore the momentum of this acting of that should be easier as it goes on. And then when he says that, if you don't do that, uh, the magic's taken away and more. Well, it's, if you do something and then you don't acknowledge it as magic, then the magic has been taken away from it. It becomes normalized. It becomes every day. And your power as a magician, your outlook has, has, has lost some of its magic. So it's a psychological thing in a sense, but also a bit of woo-woo though, um, which, you know, I'm totally fine with. Um. Now, the danger, of course, of going from an acting as if and going from a subjective truth, small t, is that to its, this whole thing of, well, there's two things. There's one of that you can get very quickly into the whole law of attraction, uh, new age, spirituality thing of victim blaming, in that if all of this is, you know, how you view the world and, you know, reality is malleable and truth is all small t everything is subjective truth there's no real truth or if you entirely approach chaos magic in that way or the world is that in that if something bad happens to someone then it's their fault if someone gets cancer it's because something they did it's just you know they've hold, hold on to some resentment or some sort of thing or if something bad happens to them it's their fault and that can only really happen if people have decided that there's no capital T truth, there's no actual thing outside there or whatever. And I think that's a danger. And I don't think I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's fair to put on other people. I don't think it's fair to put on yourself. Because sometimes capital T truth comes and bites you in the ass. Sometimes. And it also doesn't work in the thing of at what point do babies start making or you know, creating their own world or whatever. Like they're not acting as if they're acting as if they're babies because they are babies and people then blame the parents and the thoughts and the vibes and the energies around all that and i don't i you know that's not good i don't like that victim blame i've talked about this before and the, people then come into the whole co-creating thing of it then that it's not just that you are creating your world you're co-creating it with everyone or you're co-creating with the universe now if you're co-creating it with everyone well that's kind of that's you know a non-magical view in a large way because of course everyone doing their thing is co-creating that's what the entire thing is life so i don't think that's what people talk about or actually point out when they say co-creating they mean it on some sort of magic woo-woo level 
And if you were co-creating with the universe, who is more say? Have you more say than the universe or is the universe more say than you? And at what point have you autonomy or do you, are you a slave to what the universe wants and all that? So there are questions that you can go into as well that can muddle you in the sense of if you're acting as if and then you can go, well, maybe the universe doesn't want me to have this. Is that why it failed or whatever? Which then is, you know, not compatible with the kind of chaos magic view of acting uh, as if because there's the judgment and then it's kind of like if you pray for something and you didn't get it it's because God didn't want it, you to have it or you're better for it and there's a judgment and it kind of is a, a loophole out of why magic doesn't work is because it's better for you if you didn't get it and again that's all, all of this is not falsifiable and not helping you verify anyway so there's that limitation in the whole uh, feud uh, chaos magic thing. The other thing is that acting as if to get a desired result and uh, it, my thing would be if it works, if the result works, then do more of it. If it doesn't change it and move on to so or, or uh, drop it or change it or move on to something else. And something that was pointed out to me or said to me t t today and I think this is again is another danger of this which is why it all comes down to why I wouldn't try to convince anyone of a chaos magic point of view is because, because of these th kind of end results, is that if you are jumping from thing to thing trying to sort something out and none of it is happening, none of it is working, then the danger is that you leave it too late for, you know, example, is a better example. So if you are sick and you are coming from a chaos magic point of view and you're going, well, I will act as if homeopathy works. I will act as if acupuncture works. I will act as if positive thinking works. I will act as if gratitude works or whatever you're approaching, whatever your thing is. And you go, well, acupuncture isn't working. Then you move on to Reiki or sigils or whatever. And none of it is working. By the time you come to the thing where you go, well, maybe I should just do the chemo. It could be too late. And there definitely is, I haven't fully unpacked this uh, um, so I'd, I'd be very interested in what other people think of it. Um, there is definitely is a danger in bringing the chaos magic acting as a conclusion to to things. And, to, and worse, if you're doing it to, say, your children or extended family members or your dog or your pets or something like that. Now, I think you're probably kind of, personally think you're probably kind of foolish if you're just relying on magic for these type of things. I would probably be more on the side of the fence that thinks magic is a psychology than I am thinks magic is woo-woo or spiritual. And I definitely... I'm not thinking of there's no atheist in a foxhole. It would be interesting I've in a complete disaster point of view is is there <laughs> is there a chaos any chaos magicians in a foxhole too? Or would we just very quickly revert to the reality around us and big T truth? So the long and short of that, and what, what I was kind of trying to bring it all around is, uh, uh, of saying is that while I don't have the need to uh, try and convince other people of my truth, um, and I don't really care or I don't mind, is probably the, the fairer word, what other people think, and I would ne certainly never try to convince other people of it, is because of this whole acting of a, uh, uh, as if and small t truth being more important to me as a chaos magician but also i'm not convinced entirely convinced of the entire theory either whether it's a good one or not so it seems to work well in certain places and it can definitely make you more positive feel more autonomous and feel better about your life and that you have more control and more say and there definitely seems to be a very positive impact. I don't know how far that goes and how kind of dangerous it could be going to, you know, going full, fully into it or whatever when the chips are down and things are very bad. Um, you know, in cases of you know, sickness, severe, uh, you know, financial difficulties or whatever. And so... I, I wouldn't try to convince anyone of, or try to convince, if they said that chaos magic is a load of shit, I would go, fine, I'm not, I don't want to convince you. All I will, I will talk about what I think and about my approach to it and how it seems to work in certain things. And certainly, I will t openly talk about how having a chaos magic outlook on, on life and having a small t truth outlook has helped me definitely as uh, to be a happier 
compared no I'm not uh, tremendously I don't sit around being happy all day but I overall my level of happiness of contentment or not being depressed I, I, is higher I have more up days and I have down days since I changed from thinking the world is a, a terrible place um, the only about entropy and uh it being you know almost like hell and stuff like that that i taught for years like just i had a very negative outview in life and it's like a jealous person will definitely be able to gather evidence of a cheater's infidelity whether they are or not an angry person will always find something to be angry about a chaos magician can always uh, find evidence if they want to, to verify that there was more magic in your life or to, you know that to, you know to re-enchant the world, and uh, I'm okay with that. I'm I, but I'm okay with it knowing that it's subjective and small t truth, and that's fine. Um, but it's then trying to, while I can express that and can come from my point of view, I would find it very hard and not morally possibly right in trying to convince someone. That they should have feel like that but then i have a blog i have a podcast i have 40 servants i have all of these things that in some way it could be very well argued that i do try and get people to think that way ultimately it all comes down to that i don't think i will ever be on a tv program or in some big debate i don't do it on facebook i don't do any go into any of these occult debates or whatever in trying to convince someone else um, that I am right, or my view is right over theirs, because my chaos magic thing would go, Your if your view is working for you, and you're acting as if the world is the way that you think it is, and that's working, then more power to you. And two, I'm not sure, ultimately, if that is necessarily a good idea. Whereas it seems to work very well. In other, but I suppose then it comes back to that whole thing of Newton's idea, Newton's theory, versus Einstein's theory, where Newton's theory works f for most of it, and then doesn't at all on the bigger scale, and Einstein's theory works on the bigger scale or whatever. But still, Newton's theory um, is you know is workable and you can use it whatever. So perhaps chaos magic is equivalent to like a Newton's theory, and we just don't have the Einstein theory that will bring together, or the the, the, the even for the past Einstein this universal theory that they look for, you know, that explains everything. Um, and perhaps that's okay that chaos magic only works to a certain extent or in, in not all situations and maybe it's unfair to try and um put it up against these very it's like it's very easy to win an argument by saying nazis you know that's what the nazis taught and like it's also you know goodwin's law of that ends the argument and you've lost once you invoke the the, the nazi thing so it, it's very easy to put something into a, a a situation where it can't win against and like say uh, chaos magic is useless because it doesn't cure cancer every time and maybe that's unfair and maybe it's not unfair so this is kind of what i've been thinking about and uh, i would love to hear your thoughts on this i really would i'd like to, to have a, a good discussion around this and um, what's your thoughts and what's the limitations of the chaos magic theory um What's your thoughts on the whole victim blaming? What's your whole thoughts of trying to um, make chaos magic fit into every eventuality? Is that good? Is it bad? Is chaos magic more than psychological to you? Is it just a psychological approach? Um, and if it is just a psychological approach, how necessary is it to um, work on yourself and you become a better person than it is just, um, you know, having happy, positive thoughts or seeing the world through a certain filter or acting as if? So whatever your thoughts are on this, uh, let me know and uh, let's get a discussion going. So, uh, yeah. So that was one of the podcasts where I tried to, as I spoke and as I said these things out loud, tried to develop the idea or come to some sort of conclusion in my own mind about it. And I actually ended up recording it twice. The first time I really got lost and I didn't really end up in a clear place whatsoever. I think the second time I got a bit closer, but still still pointing around the, the, the thing than actually at, at the thing. So again, I will stress that I'd like to, to talk this out a bit more and uh, get other people's views on it. Maybe I'm completely wrong in the whole thing. Maybe I'm completely right in it. Who knows? So, yes, that was the Tommy Kelly podcast. And if you like that sort of thing, then you can go to adventuresandwoo.com 
And you can find a whole host of other podcasts. There's about, uh, I think, 40 out of them now at this stage. And uh, there's also all the information you could ever possibly want about the 40 servants there, which is my Oracle and Magic system. That has become quite popular and people seem to really like. And there's also a uh, YouTube channel, there's the uh, blog, there's a magic uh, primer there that if you're just new to magic and occult uh, ideas in general, it'll give you a bit of a pointer from where to start. There's lots of links to websites, YouTube videos, lectures, podcasts, all that kind of thing. I'm also, uh, the Adventures Movie has my photography, my art and all that kind of thing. There'll be more art, art will be added over the next while as I'm just trying to get that to be more of a repository of my art in that the whole site is chaos, magic and art. So there should probably be some art on it. There's stuff about the 40 devils there, the four devils there, excuse me, and uh, all the stuff that you could ever want. So that's adventuresmubu.com. If you're interested in helping me out and supporting me, then you can go to tommykelly.com, which is T-O-M-M-I-E, Kelly, Kelly with a Y, and that'll bring you to my Patreon. And you can uh, sign up for a lot of different tiers of rewards, whatever. And at the minute, uh, we're doing a, a, a meditation, a shadow work meditation course. Course, mm, We're doing a meditation thing uh, called The Journey, which we're going through different shadow aspects each month using servitors to train, you know, to try to become less assholes. That's basically the long short. We started that in January, but you can start that at any time. And there's a Facebook group and all that. If that's something that interests you, go to TommyKelly.com. There, as part of the world, you'll also find all my comics. You will find the Grimoire of the 40 Servants on PDF, which is the only place you can get it. You'll get the digital deck. You get everything first. So you get the podcast first, YouTube stuff. Um, all of the things happen first. And, you know, there's stuff that only happens there as well. So, good people of the internet. May you have a wonderful, wonderful week. And may you be blessed with all the things. And may every time you act as if some belief you have is true, may it only end up in a good place for you. And may you uh, skirt around the dangers that may or may not um, be part of the chaos magic theory. Have a good week.